If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing, clicking the like button, and notification bell. It really helps the channel. Today's video is sponsored by the good people over at Special Effects Supply. Whether you're a beginner or a seasoned professional, Special Effects Supply have you covered. The site is massive and filled with a huge variety of products and information. Go visit them at fxsupply.com. Tell Steve that Josh says hi. Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to be doing live casting of just the face. So there are many different types of live casting that you can do. Uh, pretty much any part of the body can be cast and it's going to be just a matter of uh, figuring out the right techniques to be able to get a good cast of wherever it is that you're needing. So if you need to sculpt a, a glove, obviously you're going to need the hand. There's techniques for doing that. Um, if you're needing a full torso, there's techniques for that. So today we're going to be doing, just in case uh, you're needing to, to have something for a prosthetic, um, that was just going to be on the face. So we're not going to be applying a bald cap, uh, which often you can do if you want to get it all the way up to to this line here, uh, you would apply a bald cap. Today we're not doing that, we're just going to do the face and I'll show you a way that you can kind of fill in the rest and, and it'll be fine. So before we get started, I just want to cover a little bit of information about life casting, especially of the face. If you have a model or an actor who has never had a life cast before, it can be a little bit uh, intimidating it can make them a little bit nervous because in their mind there's the potential for suffocation. Now this really is, is not based in any reality uh, but in their mind they're, gonna, they, they're getting like a goo on their face it's going to be basically running down their face and if it covers their air passages then obviously they're, they're not going to be able to breathe. The best way that I can describe that to people if they bring it up is that if it's runny enough to be able to run then all they have to do is just open their mouth just and they'll be able to breathe because you're not putting that much on them it's going to totally cover the mouth uh, I've only had one instance where somebody uh, where, where one of my students had ran down over the nose and the person panicked and breathed in um, but they were able to, I just told them, open your mouth, and, and they opened it and it was fine. I usually like to sit and have a discussion with my actor or my model uh, before we get started to see if they have any questions. And there's a few things that uh, I like to cover with them first, just to make sure that they have a complete understanding of what's going to happen. Usually knowledge will allay any fears that they have. So the things I like to cover with them um, and things that have just come up over the years, uh, I've done hundreds of these and uh, usually it's the same few concerns or few questions. So I start with just giving them a little bit of a spiel and, and at the end of that I'll say do you have any, any other questions. So the spiel I like to give them is uh, I'll explain that what we're doing is a life cast. It's called a life cast. It's made from, we're going to be using algae in it today. There are other materials that you can use, uh, silicone for one, um, but uh, we're going to be using algae in it. And it's made from seaweed. It's, in, it's totally natural. It, it actually will pull a lot of uh, impurities out of the skin. It's actually very good for the skin. It's like, it's like getting a mask uh, if you go, go to the spa. So um, it, it, they don't have to worry about having any kind of nasty chemicals on their face. The next thing, I'll, I'll explain what's going to happen. Uh, some people like to put straws in the nose. I'm not a big fan of that. I think it, it, if you put straws in the nose, it distorts the nostrils a little bit and, and you don't get a, an accurate cast. So what I normally do is I'll just leave the nostrils free and just get right in between and, and take the alternate right up to the edge of the nostril and then there's no problem. Uh, and, and I've found that that's worked great for um, pretty much all the casts I've done. Uh, I 
also like to cover um, the process. So we're gonna be putting the alginate on. I'll start at the side, so I'll sweep up. The last thing I'm gonna do is the nose. And uh, obviously they're not gonna be able to talk. So uh, I have this is yes or thumbs up. This is no or thumbs down. Um, the alginate will take roughly 10 minutes, maybe less, depending on, on how cold the water is. But uh, I, I use um, the 590, which is five minutes at 90 degrees. So, you know, it can take five to seven minutes usually. And then after that, we put on the plaster bandage, which usually takes about 10 minutes. So the whole process will probably take anywhere from 15 to 20 minutes if you're prepared before they get here. I'll show you what I do to prepare for the life cast. We'll go through all of that. I'll prepare the plaster bandage for you, uh, go over all of the elements we're gonna be using, and, and so you'll know how to totally be prepared for that. I, I also make sure that they know that at, at any time they want to take it off, uh, you know, that they just, they just need to sort of indicate somehow and, and we can get it off, no problem. Some people just have really bad claustrophobia issues uh, and, and, and they have a hard time with it. So uh, I, I've only found a couple of people who, who I've had to do that with. So, and one of them was, was, a, was an actor from LA, very well known, you would know who it is, you would know their name. Um, they're an A-list, celebrity and uh, they'd had a bad experience with a life cast for another film that they were working on and uh, it, it just created this this issue in their mind uh, at the end they were perfectly happy with it and they said you know you, you guys can come and, and cast me anytime um, and and for him we did a, a full body cast and a face cast and a head cast like it, it was a lot of casting but the face cast was sort of where it was like uh, yeah nah I, I want to get it off then I explained that the plaster bandage is put on to be able to sort of cradle the, the alginate so that when we put the plaster or the cement in, it holds its shape. One other thing I usually ask them is if they're wearing mascara. Now I ask this for both men and women. Oddly enough, you probably think that uh, men wouldn't wear mascara. A lot more men wear mascara than you would think. And there are guys who are like, I don't wear mascara, what do you think I am? It's like, dude, if, if you do or if you don't, uh, this, is, this is the reason that I ask. Because the mascara will stain the alginate. And when the alginate's coming off, they'll look into it and it'll look like all of their eyelashes are in the alginate. Uh, so I, I explain that to them to prevent them from having a freak out moment. Uh, now, if you don't apply the release to the eyelashes and the eyebrows, that could be reality you could actually pull out their eyelashes so make sure that that uh, we do that and I'll explain that as we're going into the cast I then would ask them if, if they have any any further questions uh, if they do then just sort of answer them if they don't then you can kind of get on with the get on with the task at hand so without further ado let's get into the materials and the prepping before my model arrives. So this is my favorite brand of alginate for doing life casting. It's the AccuCast 590. Uh, as I explained before, the five is for five minutes and the 90 is for 90 degrees temperature water for doing it. Uh, a lot of people, they just sort of guess the temperature of the water and they put it in and it's kind of warm and they go, oh, I guess that's Guess that's not around 90 degrees. 90 degrees should actually feel a little bit cool to the touch. The human body is what about 98 degrees, I think, something like that. So 90 degrees is actually less warm than the body. It's cooler than the body. So just bear that in mind. Uh, if you have a thermometer and you want to use it, that's fine. I normally just do it to around about the body temperature and it just it won't hurt the alginate, it's just the warmer the water is, the faster it will set. So you need to understand that, that if you want to do it fast, use warm water. If you're wanting to really slow it down, use really cold water and that'll give you, you know, almost twice as long. So 
uh, just be aware of that. So for this particular life cast, we're going to be using uh, two of these orange cups. Uh, we're going to put that into the into the bowl for the alginate. Roughly two cups. That should be well more than enough than we need. Uh, so what else are we going to need? Uh, I normally have paper towel down just because it uh, it looks a little better to put the plaster bandage on. You can also pick it up to carry the plaster bandage away while you're mixing your alginate and that will prevent you get splashing water on your plaster bandage. So we've got uh, two rolls here of the uh, four inch plaster bandage. Uh, that should be well more than enough for the face. We'll prep those in a moment. I have a bowl here which uh, I'm going to be putting some warm water in for the plaster bandage, but I'll do that when we need it. Uh, I've got my jug of water here to add for the alginate. I have a separate bowl just in case I need it. There's petroleum jelly. This is crucially important. It uh, <laughs> This is what prevents the alginate from pulling out their lashes and their eyebrows. And, and I also put a little bit of around the hairline uh, in case some gets in the hair. I have uh, two pairs of gloves and I have some table salt. Now the table salt is actually for uh, putting in the water for the plaster bandage. It helps the plaster bandage set, set uh, faster and harder for some reason. I don't know why, but it works really well. So just add some table salt into the warm water. And I think that that's pretty much everything that we need, apart from obviously something to go around the model. Um, you can use shower curtain, you can use a trash bag, you can use a makeup smock. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to use. But this is pretty much everything that we're going to need, at least for the life cast part. Once that's done, then we'll go into actually producing the cast and I'll go over what those materials are at that time. So the first thing we have to do is prep the plaster bandage. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, the first way is going to be with scissors. So you're going to pull the plaster bandage out uh, however much, four times whatever it is that you think you're going to need. Uh, so it's usually a little bit longer than what you think. And then you cut it with the scissors. This is very time consuming. It takes uh, a little bit of messing around, putting it down, cutting it. You're going to fold it in half and then you're going to fold it in half again. And what that does is it means you can put one slab of plaster bandage on the face and you get four thickness. The way that I prefer to do it is just to grab it and uh, rip it on the edge of the table. And you can see how fast this is. It uh, is great if you need to prep a whole bunch of plaster bandage rather than just one bit at a time. So you can just sort of do it and rip it and rip it and rip it and rip it and then fold it all up. Some people, they'll cut the plaster bandage into tiny little pieces and then do almost like a paper mache on the face and it takes a very, very long time. This way, by doing it um, that way, uh, it's much faster. So you're gonna see that I've, I've prepped some that are, that are different lengths and some that are kind of narrow and skinny. Those ones are for the nose. So uh, having just moved, as you can see, it's a different location. Uh, I have not yet located my makeup capes, so I will be using a rubbish bag, or if you're in America, a trash bag for this particular life cast. It doesn't really matter, as long as you're protecting the clothing, that's the most important thing. I'm going to be taping it on using some masking tape. Uh, don't use duct tape or gaff tape on the skin, the adhesive is a little too strong. So I'm just going to tape it around from the back to hold it in place. Uh, one thing to be noticed, uh, to be aware of is if it gets too close to the breast, have your model push it down. Don't just go in and push down the, uh, the tape somewhere that's a, a sensitive area. It shows respect and professionalism. Uh, I'm also going to be taping across the top. Uh, my rough guide is that if it is above the, the top of the armpit, you're usually pretty good to be able to touch it. If it goes below that, have them do it. Now the tape there, we're not going to be going down nearly that far on this, uh, but it's just to prevent any anything running down in case it does. Uh, I usually mix my alginate a little bit thicker than than uh, than they suggest, but uh, you know you never can tell. So we're going to be doing the Vaseline. 
I'm just explaining there sort of some uh, stuff that we talked about at the beginning about if she wants it off, how to motion for that and, and whatnot. So here's the uh, Vaseline or the petroleum jelly. I'm just making sure that I put a nice amount on the eyebrows. Uh, that is to prevent it from sticking to the alginate. It also minimizes the amount of rough texture that comes from the hair in the alginate. So it's also less clean up. If you can really slick it down, that is uh, optimal. I'm doing around the hairline. Uh, often when you're doing this type of life cast where you're not wearing a bald cap, you will get some in the hairline. This way they'll just be able to just grab it and slide it right off the head, right off the hair. And it, it's very easy cleanup and stops them from uh, having algae that's stuck to their hair. So make sure that there's a very thorough application. I usually go in around about an inch to an inch and a half up onto the, up onto the hairline. And, uh, you know, be gentle with it. You don't have to go so hard that you're going to rock their head back. Some people are a little heavy handed and, and don't, I, I don't put gobs of it in so that it's going to be hard for them to get out, but it just needs to be enough to slick it down and lubricate the hair. The last thing I do is the eyelashes, which are very important to do. If, uh, they are, eyelashes come out very, very easily and it's uh, a very unpleasant time for your actor or your model if you don't lube the eyelashes. It is going to feel a little bit unnatural and weird when when it goes on there, and uh, it's not going to be enjoyable for them. But it's a lot more enjoyable than having your eyelashes pulled out in the alginate. So uh, I make sure that I work it in really well into those lashes. And you want to make sure that there's not big gobs of it as well. Just just work it in well, um, very gently. And uh, you can see that I'm going sort of back and forth and, and in from underneath with my finger uh, just to make sure that it, it coats all of the hair well. And then uh, you want to remove any excess that's going to be on the skin. You can use a baby wipe to remove it or some paper towel. Uh, <clears throat> here I'm just going to be using some paper towel to just remove some of the excess. You don't really have to, but uh, you know. Okay, so here we have the uh, mixing of the alginate. Now with alginate, you always put the powder in the mixing bowl first. When you're doing plaster or cement, you put the water in first. But uh, this is meant to be a one-to-one -one mix, but I find that the one-to-one -one mix doesn't really work that well. And you'll notice that as I go to mix it, it's going to be incredibly uh, thick. So I add a little bit extra. Now, whatever, you, whatever amount you use to activate alginate, it's almost like it's got a memory. So if you, if you put too much water, uh, it's going to be really soupy and hard to work with. But uh, if you have to add water into it, sometimes it's really hard to mix it in because it goes sloppy. So I find if I just make a claw with my hand and then just vigorously whip it back and forth, it forces everything to mix together. Now you'll notice that uh, some of the videos you see, the alginate, you put it on and it just runs everywhere. I've made this batch a little bit thicker just so it's not quite so runny. Uh, which gives me a little bit more control. The thing you need to watch with this though is that it can lead to having air pockets on the face you're gonna have to clean off afterwards. So I always start at the top and sweep down the sides. Uh, one of the other benefits of doing it thick like this is that uh, I'm able to get quite a thick, quite a thick amount on, um, which has the danger of distorting the face if somebody's old or they've got you know loose skin it can really pull the skin down uh, she was quite young and and sometimes if you mix it a little bit too thin it'll run off and you'll get a very very thin coating of alginate on the face 
and uh, it can it can sometimes be too thin and distort when you put it back into the plaster bandage to to put the the plaster or the cement in so I like to make it fairly fairly thick amount you know a good solid strong amount and uh, and in that way it, it's not going to be distorted nearly as much it's going to give you a, a more accurate more accurate thing I wouldn't do I wouldn't do it this thick if I was doing say a chest cast of a female because the breasts are quite soft and they distort very easily any 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 uh, weight excess weight on their gravity will pull them down and give you a distorted cast but on the on the face of someone who's young and has a lot of uh, collagen in the skin and the skin retains its elasticity very well uh, you'll be able to to get a little bit more on there so i'm just basically you can see i'm uh, leaving the nose till last and now i'm just going in to make sure that i've got a little bit going down between the nostrils and constantly monitoring the nose holes to make sure that it's not uh, infringing on on her airflow because uh, breathing is <clears throat> quite important <laughs> and then I'm going to just put some water on my hands you'll see that I'm just sort of rubbing them together and then uh, you can use that water to smooth out your alginate if you leave your alginate super bumpy I know some people like to do it really really bumpy but I find it harder to seat it back into your plaster bandage if it's super bumpy and the plaster bandage doesn't get all the way in and if it's a combination of being super bumpy as well as thin you're going to end up with quite a distorted cast so i like having it smooth but still you know have, have enough variety in the alginate to be able to uh, i guess key it back into the plaster bandage more easily make sure that you're always going and checking on the the air air passages i uh if possible will have somebody there with me to do the life cast i've, I've done many of them myself and and i can do it fine but if it's your first time doing it uh, i would recommend having a friend or a colleague assist you and their primary job is going to be to monitor those air passages to make sure so you're not working somewhere especially if it's a full head or if it's you know, you're working on the top of the head and you don't notice that some of it's run down over the nostril, they'll be there to be able to help them and to be able to ensure that their breathing isn't infringed upon at all or restricted because that can lead to a very uh, unpleasant experience for them if they're constantly worried about that. So it's usually for their peace of mind. You can see how much was left. That was quite a lot of excess. Now, you can see that I've taken the the alginate all the way to the corner of the ear and that's just as a reference I, I want to be able to know exactly how much room I've got on the cheek so I usually capture just a tiny little bit of the of the uh, of the bottom of the ear now I've got my warm water for the plaster bandage this is now I guess about five minutes later the alginate is totally totally set and I'm just adding this salt into the water to be able to uh, be able to get that plaster bandage set faster. Just making sure before I place out the plaster bandage that there's no water left on the table. You don't want it soaking through your paper towel and then it uh, makes your bottom layers of plaster bandage set up while you're putting these ones on so usually I start right on the forehead right at the top and uh, gently gently press that all over the face to make sure you get into all of the grooves and all of the other things the reason I start at the top is because uh, once you start going down the bottom uh, it's much harder especially if you're wrapping it under the chin like I am here, it's harder for it to stay. Whereas you can see those two corners are attached onto that plaster bandage. Uh, it'll actually help it stay in place a little bit more. So you can go down the sides first if you're finding that uh, that's not wanting to sit under the chin. You can certainly go on the side and then attach the, the chin later. So now it's just a matter of taking those you can see how much i'm able to do at one time with just one application of that plaster bandage just bam half the face is done bam half the face is done and usually i'll overlap them a fair bit so that i have a nice strong shell to 
help maintain the shape of the alginate. And always make sure that you uh, keep your edges wet and, and don't have like a big thick heavy edge always sort of blend it out with your hand onto the alginate so that when you put the next piece on there's not a gap underneath it's not going to affect it so much with such a thick application of the alginate but if you have a thin application of the alginate it can actually give you a big distortion where that gap between the plaster bandage and the alginate is because once you pour in the in the plaster or the cement it's going to create weight on the alginate and it'll push it down into that gap so always make sure that when you're putting it on the alginate that you are sort of trying to blend it off as well as possible and that'll give you a nice even thing so you can see i've done everywhere here except for the nose um the bottom of the nose and uh we'll be doing that in just a moment i'll show you how to apply that nose piece uh this one piece goes down the middle just wanting to make sure that i've got a nice strong edge around the outside that way it's not going to flare out when I put the when I put the ultra cal 30 into it it's not going to cause the pieces the, the sides to sort of bow out and give you a distorted cast so you can see this little thin piece I'm just going to put it right in between the nose there right over the nose make sure you don't block the nostrils when you're doing it and then we're going to pinch and that'll create an opening and also create a very strong <clears throat> a very strong reinforcement on that area so it doesn't distort And we're going to hold that in place by putting another couple of smaller pieces just on the top and bottom just to hold it in place. You don't want your plaster dripping, dripping, dripping. So I normally just run my fingers over it just to remove any excess water. You do want it to be wet. You don't want it to wring it out so much that it's dry and sort of almost dry. You want to do it that I just lightly just sort of squeeze you off the excess with my fingers and uh, and if I do it lightly without squeezing too tight it's usually about the right degree of uh, water saturation on the on the plaster bandage for it to be able to bond with the other pieces you can see all that water dripping all over the all over the plastic there <clears throat> I usually uh, suggest my models or my actors wear old clothes for life casting because you never can tell if there's going to be an accident and they're going to get something on their clothes which is unfortunate and, and kind of sucks because algin it's hard to get out of clothing sometimes. If, if you do find that you get some that, that, that lands on some clothing, don't try and wipe it off, let it set up, and then you should be able to peel it off quite successfully. So we've waited for that to set, and uh, now we're just going to work that off. Now the alginate, we're going to just get our fingers in around the edges and make sure that they are released i'm having her move her face around make sure that she's not doing too exaggerated movements because you don't want to tear the algin especially if it's a, a thin coat but you have it just sort of move the muscles and you'll feel it dislodge and then you can get your fingers in and just gently gently pull it off now be aware that it may be attached to the hair so you don't want to just rip it off because uh, that could tear your algin and it could cause uh, discomfort for your actor so you can see that that's a successful cast i'll put it back in the plaster bandage now I'm going to be taking a moment before I'm able to do it. So the, the best thing to do to protect the alginate, because it's made from seaweed, it will start to dry out and it will shrink and shrivel just like seaweed does. So I'm just going to get some paper towel. I'm going to just dip it in some water. Do not use your plaster water. I'm using my alginate water there. Uh, the one I dipped my hands in to smooth it out. That's why there's little floaties in there. It came off my glove. But uh, I'm going to leave that quite wet and I'm just going to basically cover the alginate with that and and I've actually gone off done a life cast on location somewhere at someone's house or out of town and as long as I keep it in nice wet paper towel uh, it, it has lasted the trip back to my shop where I can actually run it and, and create the life cast so it's a very good uh, technique very good tip to maintain the hydration of your life cast of your alginate so you can see there's quite a lot of residue left there. So she's gone off to the bathroom to remove all of that. Uh, it's nice to maybe get some baby wipes and help her with the, the areas that you can. And uh, so here we're removing the, the paper towel 
we're going to be blocking the nose holes. I've just got some uh, some wed clay, some water-based clay. I'm just going to plug the holes with that. Uh, you can use uh, plasticine. You can use pretty much anything. Sometimes I'll just get a piece of plaster bandage, just dip it in and put it across. That will give you bigger boogers in the end. You'll see what happens, but um, I found that the water clay is, is probably the easiest. Uh, you want to make sure that when you are putting it in that you're not pushing it into the holes so far that it's going to distort your, your alginate. Make sure that, that your alginate inside isn't disturbed, otherwise you'll get a distorted nose. And uh, just making sure that nothing's going to leak out when we pour in the, uh, pour in the cement. I'm just going to use that extra bowl that I had uh, to be able to sit it level. Uh, also, a tape of masking tape has also worked in a pinch for me. So I've got the water. I've poured it into the, the mixing bucket for the cement. And I'm just going to put some of the Ultra Cal 30 powder. And you can see I'm sort of shaking it so that it doesn't create just a huge big lump in the middle. That way it'll, it'll start absorbing the moisture faster now when you're mixing this up uh, be careful that you're not going to lump like, like create a bunch of uh, lumps of bubbles and and whatnot just be gentle um, I like to use my hand I go in and just sort of close it and close it and close it so I'm squishing the lumps without sort of whipping air bubbles into the into the cement uh, normally for this I would use HydroCal. It makes a very beautiful finished life cast. It's very even, uh, but I, I don't have any <laughs> with me at the moment. I've only got UltraCal, which works just as well. It just looks a little bit less even in the end result because it's cement rather than white plaster. So now we're going to, to gently, with a brush, we're going to brush this into the alginate. Now you can see that I'm kind of letting it run down to the nose there. I'm not trying to force it in. I don't want to, you know, uh, damage the, the alginate at all. And uh, then working it around the, the uh, surface of the alginate. So this is called the print coat. If you haven't watched any of my previous videos, because it gets an imprint of all the detail and texture on it. So I'm going to put, make sure we get a, a you know, reasonable amount of product on the alginate and then we are going to uh, blow on it. Now you can blow on it either with a an airbrush, uh, an air gun, obviously don't have the pressure too high. I tend to just use my, my breath <laughs> um, and uh, sort of blow it into all the nooks and crannies, make sure that uh, you see the, the uh, product moving from the from the air and then forcing it in so you get a nice coat with no voids or areas that maybe have been missed and then it's just a matter of gently you can see that I'm, I'm mostly just guiding it I'm not actually brushing it anymore I'm just loading up the brush with some product and just sort of drizzling it down and then guiding it to make sure it's even So we'll pick up what's left now and we'll dump it in. Now obviously the sides are a little higher than the top and the bottom. That's just the nature of a face. So we're going to put in until we get roughly to the limits of where we can. Make sure it's nice and even. And then we're going to leave that to set up even more. So that when it's a little bit more solid, almost like a clay, then we can go in and reinforce those sides. You want to be careful not to have the sides be very, very thin because when you turn it over, it's going to end up just cracking off and breaking and, and reducing the surface of your life cast. So uh, I pack it up against it and then sometimes I'll, I'll grab a little bit more out of the middle and I'll pack it in so that you want to make sure that, that uh, the edge on the outside is as close to a 
90 degree as you can. Obviously that's not always the case, but here, uh, you know, I get, I get close enough that it's still quite, uh, quite strong and sturdy and, and I'll be able to prepare my section mold or my core for sculpting on from that um, and correct it quite easily. It'll support that very, very well. I'll put a link for that up in the corner. Now we're just sort of evening it all out, making sure it's as, as sort of even as we can. It doesn't have to be flat on the back because when you, when you uh, correct your life cast and uh, prepare it to become a core for sculpting on, you'll be you know, adding clay and some other stuff around it to be able to take it all the way down to the table and fill in any, any areas that are not not flush, so there's not a problem with that. Just gonna get a brush and I'm going to just finish that down. That's kind of rough. You don't want to have any surface that you could uh, bust your knuckles on or hurt your hand, so everything should be finished down. So I'm just gonna take my same brush, I just rinsed it out, I'm gonna run it over the surface almost like a wet rake. <laughs> just to smooth it all down and, and make sure that it is, uh, it's hand suitable, hand safe. And then once, once you're happy with that, then we wait. And usually this is UltraCal 30, which means it has a 30 minute uh, set time, demold time. There is an UltraCal 60, but uh, I don't know why anyone would wanna use that. So once we've allowed for the magic passage of time, we are going to remove the plaster banded shell carefully. You don't want to damage the shell if you can help it. Uh, I'm always trying to be very, very careful with this and also removing the alginate. Uh, notice that you've got the boogers around the nose that are kind of trapping the alginate in there. Be gentle as you can, try and move it around it. If you have a, a failed cast and you want to redo it, you're going to want to have your algina and your plaster bandage intact. This is all dry now. Uh, time for the cleanup. Uh, <clears throat> so, just got a bunch of these small chisels that uh, I got from Harbour Freight. Oh, just a few dollars for, for a set uh, and just gonna very carefully remove these boogers there we go I usually will clean up the eyebrows, pretty much take them, take them off entirely um, and just leave a very flat reminder of where they are in case so that when I'm sculpting a prosthetic it uh, I'm not running a you know prosthetic where the eyebrow is. So I'm going to be careful and I take a tiny chip off the nose. It'll be all right though. Now 
Now I like my nostrils to just be flat. I don't want to have them going into a little thingy, you know, a little recess because I don't want to have that undercut when it comes time to mold. So. I also remove the eyelashes. to a slightly slightly rounded rounded one so I'm trying to <clears throat> keep out of the light I can do this on my grinder, but uh, this is just as easy. And not everybody has a table grinder. So. I'm going to call that done.